We love our heroes and we love our villains, but in between the forces of good and evil, there are the little guys. The ones that make the story feel full. The ones that make you smile and cry. And Disney movies make no exception. So today, we're taking a look at the top 15 greatest Disney sidekicks of all time. But before we begin, if you want to do us a solid, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notifications whenever we upload. Let's get started. Have a lollipop. Number 15, Jack and Gus, Cinderella. These adorable little guys are awesome and they'll make you smile the way only old school Disney can make you smile. In Cinderella, Jack and Gus risk everything to help Cinderella. They're her best friends in times of rags and they help her achieve her goals. We can lose that, Gus Gus. <laughs> They're kind, courageous, and sweet, and not even Lucifer the cat, who the heck names their cat Lucifer, can stand in their way when they want to make their friend happy. So we have to kick off this list by giving Jack and Gus some love. Number 14, The Seven Dwarfs, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Talking about a support system, Snow White had an entire crew of them. Sure, they were little, and they were quite amazed when they saw Snow White for the first time, but they did make really good friends for her probably the best friends that she ever had. And we're sorry, but a random prince riding his horse out of nowhere to wake up Snow White with a kiss doesn't really qualify as a friend. And although some might say that they were the perfect example of the friend zone, grumpy, happy, sleepy, bashful, sneezy Doc, who wasn't a doctor, and Dopey supported Snow White when she had nobody. They took care of her, they offered her a home, and they cried like babies when she was out cold. They also went to go brutally murder her assailant without question, so they were definitely pretty ride or die. Number 13, Lumiere and Cogsworth, Beauty and the Beast. These two are constantly bickering throughout Beauty and the Beast, but at the end of the day, we all know that they're great friends. After all, opposites attract. <laughs> they also make helpful sidekicks who help guide Belle through her stay in the Beast's castle, and by stay, of course, I mean imprisonment. That's not a request. <gasps> They play an important role bridging the gap between Belle and Beast, and their constant fighting is amusing. You overgrown pocket watch! Oh, take that. Number 12, Thumper, Bambi. Bambi is as classic of a Disney film as you can get, and one of the most adorable characters is Little Thumper. Yeah, but I guess I'm the one, right? Voiced by a young Peter Ben at only four years old, the authentic childish voice makes the little rabbit especially memorable. Thumper helps teach Bambi about the forest, how to walk and even ice skate, and of course, his most memorable trait is his habit of thumping his left foot. That's why they call me Thumper. Freaking adorable. Number 11, Zazu, the Lion King. This sidekick comes off as a bit annoying at first. No, not Zazu. But he's awesome at the same time, and he sure adds a lot of color and fun to the Lion King, which happens to be one of the most colorful Disney films ever made. Zazu isn't one of the most beloved characters ever, quite the contrary, actually. However, he's a character with so many layers that it was only a matter of time until Reddit started dissecting him. As a character, that is. At first glance, Zazu is there for stability and comic relief, like most sidekicks are. This is so humiliating. Despite young Simba's wishes, Zazu is always there to keep an eye on the cub, and although there isn't much a scrawny little bird can do to protect him, he's there no matter what happens. But when you look a little deeper into it though, you might find something a bit more sinister. In fact, as we broke down in our Lion King Dark Theories video, Zazu might actually be a traitor working for Scar. Well, in that case, you're fired. Okay, maybe he doesn't belong on this list. Number 10, Flounder and Sebastian, The Little Mermaid. These guys are great, and in typical classic Disney fashion, they're adorable every step of the way. They're kind of like Jack and Gus, but instead of both of them being amazing friends, Flounder and Sebastian complement each other because of their differences. If your father knew about this case, you're not gonna kill him, are you? Flounder's the fun one who will happily accompany Ariel out on an adventure. While Sebastian might be slightly annoying at times, he's always there with a bit of sound, sensible advice. He's always there with a bit of tough love, but deep down Ariel knows that he's right. And he can pull off some pretty majestic songs. Under the sea, under the sea. Number nine, Figaro, Pinocchio. Of all the sidekicks, Figaro isn't humanized. He doesn't speak, he doesn't do human things, he does, well, 
cat things. And that's precisely what makes him so amazing. Disney's getting real with Figaro here, showing that your cat, or dog for that matter, doesn't have to actually talk to be your best friend. But I guess we already knew that. In his cute animal ways, Figaro even managed to do side jobs as Minnie Mouse's pet. And we all know that in the world of Disney, to be with Mickey and Minnie is one of the greatest accomplishments ever. Number 8, Baymax, Big Hero 6. You can't not love this guy. Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. He's big, he's fluffy, and he'll forever be mistaken with the Stay Puff Marshmallow. But that's okay. Big Hero 6 isn't your typical Disney movie. It can be dark at times, and in many ways even more so than other Disney films. But what makes Baymax so awesome is that he really makes everything a bit lighter. Have a lollipop and makes everyone feel a little better and a little safer. He adds comic relief to the movie and he's the engineer of some pretty amazing awe moments. You will be all right. There, there. It's impossible not to love him for his fluffiness and everything else that he is. Number seven, Olaf Frozen. The magical little snowman was actually able to make himself one of the best parts of Frozen, mainly due to his lovable, upbeat personality that's difficult not to like. What? Whoa! Oh, I love it even more. The hilarious irony of a snowman who dreams about summertime while completely unaware of what happens to snow and the heat is just too perfect. Olaf's naivety mixed with his good nature and loyalty is what makes him so much fun. <gasps> My own personal flurry. <laughs> Everything about Olaf is silly, but that's what makes him so fantastic. Number six, Jiminy Cricket, Pinocchio. It just so happens that two Pinocchio characters landed on our list. After all, how could we talk Disney sidekicks without mentioning Jiminy Cricket? Unlike Figaro, Jiminy is very human-like. In fact, he's so human that he's supposed to help Pinocchio himself become a responsible human being. It's me, your old friend Jiminy, remember? Does Pinocchio listen to his hired conscience? No, and he ends up paying for it. Jiminy, however, does his job very well. He follows Pinocchio into everything, constantly trying to help him become better. You know, less lies and all that. In the end, Pinocchio becomes a real boy and everyone lives happily ever after. But the amount of humiliation Jiminy goes through the entire journey is downright heroic. He may be small, but he has a heart and conscience bigger than anyone else. And he's willing to take his task to a good finish. What's not to love about him? Solid gold too. Number five. Maximus Tangled Maximus somehow manages to be hilarious without even speaking. Like Figaro, he isn't humanized, yet when it comes to his personality, he's not fully hoarse either. Maximus is amazing because he's a supportive sidekick. He makes the otherwise typical Disney princess story more entertaining regardless of whether that's your ideal type of story. He doesn't talk, yet he says so much. He doesn't interrupt the story, but plays a major part in it. He's funny and reliable at the same time. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. Number four, Mushu Mulan. Although it's true that Mushu sort of gets stuck with helping Mulan, it doesn't take long for the relationship between the two to blossom into a friendship in a heartwarming way. Oh, y'all don't think I can do it? Watch this here! And with Eddie Murphy voicing the character, Mushu is one of the funniest sidekicks around. There's something especially endearing about a feisty little dragon that shoots out one-liners. Hey, dragon, dragon, not lizard. I don't do that tongue thing. But what makes Mushu such a great sidekick is his ability to be so many different things depending on what Mulan needs, from friend to mentor to fire starter. Number three, Baloo, the Jungle Book. He's the ultimate optimist, the guy in your gang who loves life to the fullest, the dude who can dance and sing like nobody else precisely because he loves life. Reel loose and then start to weave. Weave a little, now move. Baloo is thick and proud and an explosion of energy. His optimism is contagious, his music gets into your veins, and his heart is made of tremendous amounts of pure gold. He's a delight to watch, sing with, and be around. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. And he's a great life co-tutor for a little protagonist. Raised by Bagheera, who is much more responsible than the fun bear, and Baloo, Mowgli receives a balanced upbringing that teaches him to treasure life from every point of view. 
but I still think he'd have made one swell bear. Number two, Genie Aladdin. In many ways, Genie is the friend we all wish that we had. He's funny, loyal, and always has your back. Not to mention the fact that he can make all of your most wild wishes come true, but that's besides the point. Three wishes to be exact. Genie is just one of the most likable Disney characters ever made, and given the fact that he's voiced by the late Robin Williams, there's really no downside to this guy. Yo, Rockman, haven't seen you in a few millennia. Give me some tassel. <laughs> yo, yo. And despite being locked up in an itty bitty living space for so long, he maintains a great attitude when granting wishes, even knowing that his fate is to be put back into captivity. That's why it's such a great moment when he's finally freed at the end of the film. No matter what anybody says, you'll always be a prince to me. Number one, Timon and Pumbaa, The Lion King. I think I would argue that Nathan Lane's Timon is the real MVP when it comes to Disney sidekicks. Right? Right. Wrong! But the truth is, he's only part of the duo who wouldn't be anything near as memorable without his buddy Pumbaa. I ain't like a pig! Pumbaa, you are a pig. Oh. An unlikely set of animal friends, Timon and Pumbaa play an incredibly important role in Simba's growth, teaching him all about enjoying life and not letting things bother him. This, of course, results in arguably one of the greatest Disney songs of all time, Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Timon's sly, yet still loyal personality, mixed with Pumbaa's good nature and friendliness, makes for the best animated duo that we can think of. And when put together, we'd go as far as to say that they make the best Disney sidekicks in history. Who told you something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What mook made that up? <laughs> but what do you think? Do you agree with our list? Did we miss anyone? Who's your favorite Disney sidekick? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, but most importantly, stay wicked.